Hello and welcome to episode 29 of our Hearts Vine 3 Puppet Master series. Things... I kind of started going backwards a bit for us in the Soviet Union. Episode... Not the last one, the one before that, we've been doing pretty well driving the Soviets back and circling a number of divisions. But then we did kind of one circlement too many and um, lost a couple of crucial SS divisions... And since then, the um, Soviets have been pushing us back towards Crimea. And we really want to hold Crimea because there's a huge chunk of the German army, which is kind of in the Caucasus, or that kind of region. And basically, the only way for them to escape is through the Crimean Peninsula. So I've sent the SS Corps down there to kind of just look after it. It's not under threat at the moment, but it will be quite soon. But anyway... Let's see how we do it, holding the Soviets back for now. See me just finishing up mucking around my intelligence screen there. Lots of attacks to deal with. I should have also mentioned we've been invading Persia. Um, it hasn't actually been going that well. Well, well it looks pretty well, but it hasn't been that great just because it's mostly European troops invading Persia, which we really want the Africans to invade to bring that let's say 20% of my army, which is in Oberkommando Africa, probably isn't. let's say 10% of my army that's in Oberkommando Africa, getting them to join the fight against the Soviet Union. And yes, I've also been experimenting a bit with partisans. You see I've got a few here in Indochina. Um, Indochina has, of course, been occupied by Australia, which is the leader of the Allies. And yes, those are my divisions shattering. It's going to happen a lot, um... My manpower is in an abysmal situation, negative a couple of hundred. And yeah, not really a good place to be in. So I'm going to do one little push with my SS. Hopefully enough to basically drive the Soviets back. Military espionage, give me a few spots on enemy units in the Soviet Union, but it doesn't really seem to be doing much good for me. Well, apparently they've got 551 manpower. Um, 500, well, 27 manpower. Still, that's a lot of Soviet soldiers I have to kill before I can resume the offensive. Because basically, I'm not going to be able to attack the Soviets if they've got reinforcements, since, um, I don't have reinforcements, I'm not going to see reinforcements for some time. I'm trying to attack towards Hommel here. It's a long drive though from the Crimean Peninsula up to, I suppose it's southern Belarus. Maybe northern Ukraine, I'm not entirely sure. Looking again into another encirclement around Rostov. And decide that's a better option I can get to the fight quicker. See what I've actually done here is I've held down shift and Ordered them to go to Hommel, then back to Rostov. So I change that order and try quickly for another sneaky encirclement. Not really doing much in the way of planning here. I've just ordered all my troops to drive straight through, well, all my SS troops to drive straight through Rostov, and hopefully we can work it out once we're there. And let's just see how my L is doing. I've clearly got the largest army, but France, Italy, Romania, well, France and Italy. Actually, only really France is comparable to mine at 262. Italy's 100. They've definitely recovered from when I destroyed their army. Poland's still got 81. Romania, 94. UK's coming up 73. And Ireland, the um, annoying country, 50-odd brigades and no transport ships to take them out of the United Kingdom. So, I really wish the Irish would build a ship. Because if they did, their uh, troops would be very useful on the Eastern Front. The other good thing about um, invading Persia like it is, it's actually brought the British troops into to um, fight the Soviets, at least in Persia. And we're going to have a go at punching through that heavy armoured division. If I was smart, I'd probably go around it. 
but I'm clearly not, so I'm trying to head straight through it. But I did manage to win, and um, that's heavy armor division didn't put up, actually didn't put up that much of a fight. So we shouldn't have too much difficulty, just keep driving forward here. Oh, and there were some British strategic bombers, no tactical bombers helping me out. So I suppose I really can't say that Britain's not doing anything. Oh, and the French have actually almost pushed into Rostov, which would make this encirclement um, a lot easier. Of course, it's only a few divisions we are likely to encircle here, but still, we can take out a few divisions. It's, um, well, let's say three divisions, it's probably 30,000 soldiers the Soviets won't be able to have anymore. But it looks like the French have been forced to pull back from a counter-attack out of Rostov. But we're still in a pretty good spot to finish off the encirclement here. And I'm just going to start organising my SS troops a bit better here. Trying to get them in nice and solid in the area around Azov. And actually we're, we're not going to go through Rostov now, don't really want to get into street fighting, we'll just cross the river, capture Azov, complete the encirclement. And there'll be three Soviet divisions cut off, only infantry divisions, but it's better than nothing. And the Soviets have recaptured that territory, but hopefully we will take it back from that armoured division. Soviets are counter-attacking at Azov, but we should win that pretty easily. But it's delaying us, and we really don't want to waste time. We want to head straight into Batajsk and complete the encirclement here. The Soviets have pushed fairly deep into northern Poland. I've got partisans up here as well. And also the Poles have some partisans. Um, just get them to expand their network. And these ones down here are also expanding their network. Yeah, we're doing well in Persia. Taking, well, let's say the southern half of the country. We managed to complete the encirclement there. Of course, I'm not watching that because I'm trying to order my African army to invade the Soviet Union through the south. But as you see, encirclement's completed. The AI is attacking to finish off that pocket. And the AI is actually almost pushed up to that city there. Is it Homel? No, it must be Kiev. And there we go. Encirclement's complete. So now we just going to pull the SS back. And I'm actually thinking the safest way to do it now is to go back via the Crimean Peninsula. Or another sneaky encirclement? Let's try another sneaky encirclement. Again, only two divisions that will be encircled, but one of them is mechanized. And I always like taking out the powerful Soviet divisions. Two hundred and fifty third infantry's got no soldiers. And because of my poor manpower, it's not actually going to be getting a lot of soldiers either. First German revolters, they can just join the 8th Corps. Oh, they're in Oberkommando Europe, apparently. But 
This militia brigade I'm sure is going to be super useful in the fight against the Soviet Unions. Oh, and there's another one. Okay. This encirclement seems to be a bit all over the place. But, well, we might still be able to pull it off. So let's just keep going. Just get that organized a bit better. I feel like I'm an SES division short here. Yeah, I'm missing one. Um, and we're also a province away from completing the encirclement here. Ah, oh, there it is. Bremer. Um, it's obviously had to retreat for some reason. But we'll try and tighten this up. And hopefully we'll still be able to um, encircle some divisions here. Just got to wait for Student to win this defensive battle. And oh, no, we'll get Kepler to go and take that province. Now the Italians are providing us air support. Oh, and then the Soviets have pushed in that direction, so we are um, in a difficult spot here. Well, not so bad actually. Once Student's done defending, he'll be able to move south. And just move every division south one as well. We'll abandon two provinces, but at least we'll have the encirclement going. The uh, problem is, student doesn't look like he's going to win here. Um, no. Well, maybe, but it's unlikely that his troops have very little organisation. Oh, they did win. Okay. I shouldn't doubt them. Oh, and there's also Soviet armor divisions managed to get into our little pocket here. And like I say, I like taking out the powerful divisions. I mean, it's only a light armor division, but still it would have been very expensive for them to make. So I'm very happy to take it off their hands. And where's that other SS division gone? There it is, the 7th SS. Um, that's probably not the way to go. We'll send you down through Crimea. And there we go, encirclement complete. About three more Soviet divisions taken out. So, so far in this video, this episode, I've taken out six Soviet divisions. Well... I think we are still being driven back, quite significantly actually. We've lost a lot of ground towards the Romanian border there, and they're pushing even deeper into northern Poland. It's just in the center where my SS are operating that we're actually kind of gaining ground. Well, even in the center, we're probably really holding ground. And you know, I'll set over Commander Europe to stop attacking. I really don't have the manpower to leave them attacking places. Even better, let's them to withdraw because I want them to pull out of the Crimea, or out through the Crimean Peninsula. Just that's a lot of troops there if they do get cut off. More militia. Well, Bremer still isn't retreated. It's probably been overrun by attacking Soviet troops. I oh, know it's coming back slowly. It's just the front lines heading backwards at the same speed that Bremer's division is. And now I'm thinking I'm going to have to set up defensive line along this river here, just to stop the Soviets coming down into the Crimea and cutting our troops off. Oh, we're on the outskirts of Tehran. So hopefully Persia will fall soon.
Okay, the Soviets have really pushed hard on our SS troops as they pulled back. But let's start setting our guys up defensively here. Oops, I've lost my troops. I kind of want to get them into position soon, or at least I should be trying to, just so they get their proper entrenchment bonus. But... Yeah... Oh, negative six... I think that was 699 manpower. Some words, really not a good spot. Kind of still waiting for Bremer's division to come over through the Crimea, though. But really, I should just be leaving it in reserve and moving my other four divisions to the front. Oh, negative 869. So let's round it up to 900 and basically realize we are never going to get 900 manpower back. That's just too big a gap to... Um, or too big a hole, really, to fill in our forces. So the German army is basically spent. I mean, the one thing we've got going for us is that the Soviet army is also in very poor condition. Or at least they were until we captured Stalingrad, which is about a year ago now, so it's kind of old news, but it did give them a pretty massive boost. Hermann Göring Fallschirm Panzer Division is one soldier. <laughs> 5th Infantry Division has no soldiers. Well, probably General Lindemann and counts as a soldier, but he'd be the only one. Paratroopers, lots of them though. I actually don't think those paratroopers have ever done anything. I think they've always been in reserve, kind of waiting until we decide to do a power drop somewhere. And that's just never happened. The Soviets uh, look like they might actually drive a wedge through our troops in the Caucasus. Which would be quite bad. Finally get my guys into a defensive position. So I just kind of hold the line as best we can. It gives us some room to retreat if we have to. But basically I'm just going to try and wear the Soviets down. Hopefully just blunt their attack here and let those troops in the Caucasus pull back, which you see they are doing slowly. Whereas I say that, it seems that at least one Allied division is heading into that area. But a number of them are pulling back out, which is the main thing we want to happen here. And possibly even more importantly, my own troops should be pulling out, because I don't want to lose any at this point. But I have set the AI to withdraw, so you would hope they would be withdrawing. Yeah, I'm getting a bit worried about Northern Poland here. I suppose it's not too bad, but it is a lot of ground it looks like we've lost over the last kind of two episodes. But for now, I think they're actually probably holding, we'll seem to be holding in the center. No, we've been driven back a fair, but we were trying to capture Kiev at one point. So we are losing ground, I think basically across the entire front. And apparently the Soviets down to 352 manpower. So if that's accurate, they've lost about 200 manpower in a couple of months. And at this rate, come, I don't know, let's say February or March, they'll be down to zero. At least we could fight them on even terms. Persia almost conquered, and we've started pushing up into the Soviet Union there. Which is excellent. I mean, even if... The Soviets send a lot of troops and we don't actually gain ground there. Those troops would have had to come from the eastern frontier, which is going to make it easier for my soldiers to defend this region. Yeah, it doesn't really look like we're going to be able to hold the Caucasus here, unfortunately. 
Uh, 44th Infantry Division. Looks like it's about to shatter. Or at least it's got very few soldiers left, so I don't expect it to fight for much longer either way. Just get rid of a few more technologies. I really should be going and putting some more, adding some more technologies to the list, but I kind of can't be bothered. My army is very technologically advanced. And yeah. Militia. I'm just going to disband this, I think. I think it'll add a little bit of manpower back to my pool. And, well, it's not going to make a huge difference. But, um. Yeah, I think I might need all the help I can get, really, at this point. I'm trying to get it to expand the network, but it doesn't seem to be doing it manually. Perhaps there's no one to expand to, so I'll just get a few partisans to rise up. Here we go. Three brigades. And let's get him to take a little bit of land off the Soviets. And I'll just order them back into, well not back, order them into Oberkommander Europe's control. Just because I'm not going to really bother paying attention to what's happening there. Negative 871 though. I am oh, negative 876. But you see, it's adding a little bit of manpower back to my pool. So this will knock it down to 871 or 870 ish once all those troops get back on the front line. So, not really a huge difference, but um, well, it's a few thousand soldiers in a decent division because those militia aren't going to do anything practical. So I'll just get them, disband them, take their soldiers. It actually probably is. Well, it's very gamey. I was going to say for a while it seems a bit like it's cheating because I'm basically just converting my industrial capacity into manpower. Um, and it kind of is actually. But it does make sense. Just in a way that militia are useless. I'd rather get those 3,000 soldiers I'm assuming I've marched them back through Lithuania and got them to join a decent division where they're actually going to be trained and do useful things, have decent equipment. But still. I can see the logic, but I don't think it's really realistic is what I'm trying to say. But I'm still going to keep on doing it because I need the manpower at this point. Two more, three more divisions shattered. And the Soviets are actually starting to press onto my defensive line here. I believe I've still got one SS division in reserve though that I can move to somewhere else. But yeah, my troops in the Caucasus have been pushed right back against the Black Sea, so they could well get encircled here. If they don't start withdrawing, like I've ordered them to. Nothing much happening here. Oh no, we've got another one. Um, partisan unit in Hanoi now. I'm not going to give it any orders just yet. Actually, do I have one in reserve? I actually don't think I do. I think if I want to cover the area towards Odessa, I'm going to have to actually pull my SS troops off the front line north of the Crimean Peninsula here. So it's down to 279 manpower. Which 
as we say, they're getting there. They've probably lost, well, it seems about 100 manpower over the last month. I think it was just end of October, start of November we last looked, and they had 300-odd. So at this rate of attrition, that won't be very long until they're down to zero, as I am. And they are definitely advancing in towards southern Poland. And actually they've reached the Romanian border. And they're also pushing back us away from Tehran here. But our SS troops are holding north of Crimea, which is giving our troops an escape route. Although they're not really using it in the quantities I would like. But that's the AI for you, they'll stick around in that little pocket for, well, forever basically. And I actually make a bit of a mistake here, I want to disrupt national unity. As you see I look at national unity, I go no military espionage, I go, oh COVID operations, that's what I want. Um, just... I look at attempting coup, so I knew something wasn't quite right there, but I was actually trying to disrupt national unity, but for some reason I just thought, COVID operations, that's how you disrupt national unity. And then I go and look at coup, think, no, actually we can't coup them, we're at war with them, and they're the Soviets, and the Soviets, you know, Bolshevik party strong. But yeah, I'll spot my mistake in the next episode. So our defensive line here is holding, it's just not long enough. We've only got five SS divisions, and they basically spread out one per province. But we're trying to hold a front here of about seven or eight provinces now, all the way back to Odessa. I do have some room to pull back, so you see I'm pulling Reinhardt's division right back to north of Odessa. But it's going to open up gaps between my SS divisions, so we're going to have to be more active in defense and we're doing a lot of counterattacks, and the Soviets have reached the Black Sea coast, which means they've encircled a large number of German troops. And it actually looks like a lot of them in the battle near the coast are actually retreating into the pockets instead of towards safety, um, which definitely isn't a good result for us. And I'm also going to say that... Um, the map around here is a bit misleading. Um, there's a couple of provinces near the mouth of that river there where it looks like they border each other, but they actually don't. You've got to go upriver for a bit and then across and then back down river to cross from what looks like one province to the next. And there's also only one entryway into the Crimean Peninsula where it looks like the they're close enough that there should be two, just those peninsulas sticking off the north of the Perm. Yeah, the peninsula is sticking off the north of the Crimean Peninsula, come very close to the mainland, but apparently not close enough. So I'm actually defending some territory that I don't need to because the Soviets couldn't cross into the Crimean Peninsula from the provinces I'm holding, but I'm also not defending provinces I should be defending because I think I can move across the provinces behind them when I can't. But, yep, building up COVID hot points, I go, oh, wonder where that's coming from. I was a bit thick at this point in time. <laughs> it was quite late to be honest. I've been playing this, um, it was probably about four in the morning, so you'll have to excuse me doing the occasional really stupid thing and keep going back and being like, something's not right here, but I'm just going to ignore it and um, build up COVID operation points because apparently that's what you need. Oh, I didn't actually realise I was actively building up. I thought, ah, oh, I didn't know you just got COVID operation points. I wonder what I did to get those. But, yeah. Also, look at my industrial capacity here. Um, I'm actually just trying to use it as much as possible without using any manpower. Because I've also got no manpower to spare. 
So I'm building a lot of convoys, a lot of escorts, a little bit of uh, infrastructure. No point building industrial capacity because I'll just have to waste it on things. And um, lots of partisan units, just because they don't cost me any manpower. Well, the Soviets have actually pushed into Romania. And they're almost, well they actually are right up to the Polish border along most of its length. So that's definitely also not good for us. Um, lots of technologies. I'm not going to bother getting rid of them. Or should I? I see I really should be adding some more, but I can't be asked. <laughs> I'll just keep researching the ones that are there and loop them around and get really far ahead and then just ignore some probably really decent ones I should be getting. I mean, for all I know, even things like, you know, small arms and light artillery aren't in there. And infantry are still by far the bulk of my um, army here. Okay, we're into 1947 now. So the war's dragged on a fair bit longer than it did um, in reality. And since in reality Germany was the losing side, I have to count that as um, at least a partial victory for me. We've actually done, well compared to Germany historically, we've done much better. We've taken basically all of Europe, except for a few countries we haven't bothered to invade, and um, the Soviet Union, which we've really struggled against. Um, and taken huge chunks of Africa. But yeah, it's just still couldn't beat the Soviet Union. Well, not yet at least. We've still got another year before we hit the end date. Although, in a year it might be a bit ambitious actually. You see me just going around um, deleting my militia brigades to get a bit of manpower. I'm down to negative 928 manpower. So, yeah, not a good place to be in. And right now, it's kind of what I was talking about, all my um, troops in the Crimea and the Caucasus are actually cut off from the rest of my German army because the Soviets have that one province. Uh, I just didn't realise it at the time, so I'm not really reacting against that. I didn't think that was that important a province to hold. I thought I could still retreat behind it. But you actually can't. It looks like you can, but you can't. Well, the troops in the pockets down here are doing... Oh, they found their guys in Hanoi. That's not that big a deal. I mean, like, our guys are building up their strength, so we'll get that back pretty soon. Yeah, this isn't really looking good for us though. If we can't wear the Soviets down, like, immediately, they're going to start pushing into our allies' territory, and we really don't want that. If, with my army being this weak, I'm really going to rely on their, my allies being at full strength. And the AI is loading a bunch of troops onto transport ships. So I'm wondering where they are headed. i just go check. Have they... Yes, they have taken some of Persia over for Oberkommando Europe. When I really don't want them to. But we'll give that territory back to Oberkommando Africa. And hopefully they'll send some troops there. And Oberkommando Europe won't send any troops there because their troops are needed on the Eastern Front. Don't know why the AI is struggling with this so much. Well, you yeah, know, this is on the front lines now, so we are. Well, let's see, we're actually cut off, but we are barely in a position to um, still evacuate troops out of the Crimean Peninsula. And, well, 
that's where we're going to end this one. So as you see, we're in a bit of a perilous situation. We've got a huge chunk of our army is actually surrounded in the Crimea. Um, and the Soviets have also driven us right back to the Romanian-Polish borders and they're driving deep into northern Poland. Persia is the one thing where we're actually doing all right at the moment. Not great, but all right. But negative 900 manpower, that's a huge hole to dig ourselves out of. And if the Soviets are losing troops quickly, we've still got a pretty massive deficit there. So things aren't looking great for the Germans or all my puppets since they kind of rely on me to do the heavy lifting. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.